Okay, folks, welcome to the webinar. Uh, it's Friday, August 9th, and we've had uh, quite a bit of volatility in the markets. Uh, as, uh, as we know, the past uh, week or 10 days, uh, uh, you know, ever since the Fed uh, announcement came in, uh, we've had quite a bit of, uh, you know, we've had quite a bit of uh, uh, volatility. So today, the futures were down about 22 points, and now it's recovering. We'll see how uh, things play out once the markets open. So what I want to talk about today is uh, is the uh, is the uh, is the SPX intraday trading with uh, using the SPX ticks algo and the custom indicators. So uh, you might have seen uh, you might have seen this uh, these videos before, but for those who might not have, I'm going to give a brief, brief uh, uh, background on what these ticks are. And the best way to do that would be to just explain to you what the ticks are, and then just show it to you on the platform. Uh, before we, uh, you know, before the actual market starts. So now, you know, the S and P 500 index is composed of uh, 500 stocks, as we know, and um, each one of these stocks are ticking up or down on a millisecond basis. And you have the highly liquid stocks that are ticking several, several times, even tens of times, and or even hundreds of times. Apple or uh, Google might tick, uh, you know, very heavily, and so these ticks. If you look at there is a, a market internal called the tick indicator and so if you look at the ticks itself this is what it looks like and so you know this is very very noisy but it it's actually has a, a lot of key information but it's very noisy so every time a tick uh, happens up or down uh, you know it, it, it gets captured into this tick value and then as the as the time goes on as the markets are open you see this kind of a, you know a, a chart now there's you know very little you can make sense out of this kind of a chart however what what we want to do is you know after the first bar if you know what is the cumulative value so you know the, the value whether this is a down value or an up value if you keep adding it for bar after another so each bar then becomes and and that's what this tick spx here is uh, each bar is actually a cumulative value of the bars that came before it. And so what's the advantage of doing that? The advantage of doing that is then you're getting a sense of the breadth of the market. So which means as the market is open and you're calculating the cumulative up or down and you know that's when you realize that you know after a period of time you've got to let this data come in and after a period of time say about an hour or so a lot of this data comes in and then the breadth of the market becomes visible and so uh, the uh, uh, you know once you get the sense of the breadth of the market that puts you in the best possible position for a day trade on the SPX itself. Now you can do it on the SPX, you can do it on the SPY. If you do it on the SPY, you can actually uh, act like a stock trader itself. Uh, and uh, you know, and, and you can buy the ETF itself. But here I'm going to show you in this webinar uh, how, uh, you know, how you can take advantage of this. So now I launched this tick SPX and then the custom RSI is also a customized RSI indicator, which tells you to stay in the trade. Okay, so the normal RSI has been highly customized and this custom RSI tells you uh, when to stay in the trade. So as you can see, this tick is very, very noisy and uh, there's really nothing you can, uh, you know, glean from this. However, once you put the SPX, uh, the SPX doesn't trade after hours. I mean, it's not a tradable instrument, but as you can see now, uh, this is the market action yesterday and the markets opened uh, at a higher level and then started going up. However, once the tick data comes in, you can see now there is some strength going in here. So here you could have gotten, and, and you know, this is above the zero line. So the, you know, the tick SPX has a zero line. And then once it starts clearly going above the zero line and the custom RSI is already in the bullish zone. So anything above 60 is the bullish. Anything below this 40 line here would be the bearish zone. So clearly this was in a very bullish mode. And so somewhere here, you would take the trade, which is this bar right here. Uh, the level was 29.21 on the SPX. And you could have gone on this bar all the way till about here, uh, until you see two red bars. You don't, get, you don't want to get shaken off by one red, bar, uh, one red dot in the middle, but once you see two, okay, it's time to get out. So you know somewhere here you would get out. That is 29.28. So that's a difference of seven points. And so if you use a, 30, 35 delta option on the 
SPX, this can be a $1,200 to $1,400 uh, a profitable trade right there. Okay, so this is what the tick SPX is. Now, the problem with the tick SPX is, uh, it, it's not a problem with the tick SPX, but what the issues uh, that came up, uh, you know, as I launched this, and many people have got it, and I'll still tell you, the best way to do it is, uh, you know, you get the algorithm itself, and, and if you buy it, then, uh, you know, you can install it on your computer, and uh, you can, uh, you, can uh, you know, take the trades and all of that. But a lot of people, uh, yeah, let me bring the presentation here. So the, the, uh, so the lot of issues on the, on the SPX uh, uh, issues were, as far as, uh, you know, uh, just feedback from, uh, from customers is, uh, it, it, you know, all these little issues here. First of all, as I said, it is great if you can buy it. Uh, and install it, uh, and, and, and of course the custom RSI and the uh, SPX ticks goes for about uh, uh, twelve ninety seven. So uh, you know it's a little bit of an uh, of an investment, but I think it's still the best way to do it. But there were several several users who could not uh, you know install Think or Swim in their countries. So as we know, uh, we are dealing with a global trading population. While may, uh, you know many many countries can trade the U.S. markets. Not everywhere is TD Ameritrade, uh, uh, you know, allowing users uh, to open accounts and Thinkorswim is not allowed. And then many people don't use Thinkorswim for trading, they use some other platform uh, and, and, and so they're not comfortable, uh, you know, uh, installing Thinkorswim. And then many people also want to day trade stocks and options and I actually had a day trading, uh, you know, a, a webinar room up until about a month ago and for personal reasons, you know, I had to, I had to stop that. But there is a day trading algo also, which I'll show you. Uh, there's a day trading all algo also available here, uh, and uh, you know, we'll we'll get into that, uh, you know, uh, in in a bit once the market start. And then, then many people thought, okay, this is a lot of investment. There's just too much for me now. Uh, and so today we are going to discuss a solution to all of these problems. And that solution is that I'm going to be running this service on my computer uh, as a live screen webinar okay it's a live screen webinar and so just like you're watching this webinar today and just like you're watching these screens right now you'll be able to watch the, you know watch these screens now there's a you know uh, uh, let me explain the details here so the webinar screens will be on approximately at 9 15 a.m eastern time every day the complete methodology, rules, guidelines are all included inside the course. There will be no audio. I will not be present as trades can happen anytime during the day. You, you know, you'll have to, you, you could go in an hour or two later into the day. And so if I, first of all, there's two issues here. If I were to run it as a service, it would have to be an all day service. And therefore that would be, you know, it's just not practical, both in terms of uh, doing something all day and in terms of how would that be priced. So, you know, that's just not practical. Uh, but as attendees, you, you have this chat room right here. You can see, you can see other people's uh, uh, comments. You can discuss amongst yourself for good trade ideas. Anyway, the second reason I can't do the audio is because I am dealing with a personal uh, healthcare matter with one of my family members. And so I cannot commit. And that's the precise reason why uh, I stopped the day trading uh, uh, webinar also about a month ago. But the screens will be on. You'll be able to see all these, uh, you know, all, you know, all these, uh, you know, the, uh, the indicators live. And this is going to be a monthly subscription. Therefore, it doesn't matter which country you're in. It doesn't matter what platform you're in, uh, as long as you, uh, uh, you know, you sign into the webinar and you can look at the screens and you can discuss amongst yourselves, uh, you know, all of that and uh, and and, uh, and and take the trades. And so you'll be seeing a screen, something like, uh, you know, something like, you know, exactly like this. However, once the market starts, I'm going to show you some of the other uh, uh, screens as well. In fact, let me show you to you right now. So this is the day trading algorithm that I was running the day trading webinar on. So uh, this algorithm, uh, it, it, you can see this column here, day trades. And right now the market's not open, but once it opens, you will see a lot of uh, activity going on. And right now you can see there are four or five, uh, you know, four stocks in the very bullish. And that's because, let me go back to the ES here, because SPX uh, doesn't have uh, volume or pre-market information. So as you can see, the, S the ES has been climbing. And so some of these stocks are reacting to that. However, things can change after the market's open. So 
you will also be able to see the day trading column here and if you wanted to take uh, you know take uh, stocks on trades and you know right now this thing is not moving much because uh, the market is not open so i'll come back to it once the market is open and you'll be able to see that so uh, so uh, once again let me uh, uh, you know go back on some of this so this is a monthly subscription no contracts you can cancel any time uh, you will be seeing the uh, the live spx uh, the, the tick spx as well as the uh, you know custom rsi on my screen uh, the webinar screens will be on approximately 9:15 and it'll be on uh, you know until the markets close uh, till 4 uh, 4 pm uh, eastern time uh, now there is uh, quite a bit of uh, you know, just understanding it's not complicated at all there's a methodology there's uh, some rules and guidelines in fact let me uh, show you that uh, over here uh, on this one here there's some rules and you know i, I, I you know the trading plan uh, and if you see those rules uh, here these are the rules you know so you let the ticks develop for one hour because you need the data and then you gauge the market sentiment and decide whether you're going to go for calls or puts uh, and then you do that on a five minute chart now you can jump down to a one minute chart if you want to get a deeper uh, look into uh, you know what exactly is happening you, you want a quick feedback loop in fact once the markets open I'm going to keep the one minute chart because you want a quick feedback loop into okay where the sentiment is going so you know if the if the ES is bullish ticks are more than zero and increasing and custom RSI is the bullish zone you go for calls uh, and just the opposite for puts if the ES is bearish the ticks are less than the zero line and decreasing then and the custom RSI is in the bearish zone then you go for puts you look for persistence of at least two dots I mean that's the you know that's the real uh, thing there the, the, if the ticks and the custom RSI are not in sync, then there is no trade. So, for example, if the ticks are showing bullish, then the custom RSI should be in the bullish zone. And then you take profits if custom RSI or uh, the ticks go the other way. You put a tight stop loss. Uh, you know, if if the trade go because regardless of you know high, how high a probability uh, of trading, uh, you, you know, or, or how, you know, how high the probability of the setup is. Things can always change in the market. There are no guarantees in the market as to what will happen the next second. Uh, there is no guarantee, and so you might see that uh, you know sometimes uh, you know it just starts going uh, you know uh, uh, it just starts going the uh, the other way. And if that's the case, you just take a stop loss and move out because once you get the move, and, and eight out of ten times you'll get the move, and once you get the move, then you're, you're going to make a lot more money and a lot more profits on that trade. So if there's any trade that's not going in your favor. Uh, feel free to just close it out. So these are the kinds of rules that exist, and uh, you know we can, uh, and all of this stuff is uh, is 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 highlighted inside uh, the course curriculum. So uh, and I'm launching this on Monday. So this will start on Monday, this Monday, and uh, so uh, if you uh, you know if you join any time over the weekend, please take the time to go through these videos because I have quite a bit of videos there. Let me uh, just uh, you know go into uh, the, if you see the products the SPX sticks uh, and and you'll see the uh, you'll see a number of uh, uh, you know a number of things here. No, actually you, you know you'll have to log in and, and go in. But once you log in, you'll see the curriculum. Uh, there's an entire curriculum there. So in fact, uh, let me go to my Bitly link and uh, you know put that there. It's on my PDF here. Okay, this is the, the bit.ly link for this. So if I click this, you'll come to uh, this course page and this is where you can enroll for 149 a month. And then you'll see that there is an entire set of videos here. There's multiple videos. You can see this one itself. There are videos totaling to 81 minutes and this one there is uh, 66 minutes. So please take the time to go through this because this is important uh, because you'll be trading based on this knowledge. Okay, so <coughs> excuse me. Um, so yeah, please type your questions. I'll get to it uh, in just a minute. Uh, I think the markets are going to open any uh, yeah just about in 15-20 seconds. So let's go back to the markets and let's just watch this. I'm going to drop down to a one minute chart here. <coughs> Excuse me. And this is the ES one minute chart. And uh, let the markets open. Uh, just going to open in about five seconds, and then you'll see this. The, you'll see the ticks start to develop. Like I said, the previous day's ticks were uh, the previous day's ticks were here, but you'll see the same ticks starting to develop now. 
So we've had a little bit of a nice bull run in the pre-markets. Bull run meaning it is still down, but it was down over 20 points. And so, uh, you know, uh, from that perspective, it is a little bit of a bull run. So now let me show you the day trading column also. Now you can see there's a lot of changes happening over here. Stocks are moving from bullish to bearish and things like that. So you also have this day trades column and you'll have the uh, the SP, uh, the ES here, you'll see the volume on the ES. So general technical analysis uh, uh, rules always apply. And so if you see something that's uh, out of the ordinary in the volume, then uh, you should try to make sense of that. Uh, then you'll see the ticks develop. You can see that now the first tick is developing at negative 100. Uh, the custom RSI is just a price action based indicator. So, but once it goes into bullish or bearish, yeah, it, you, you know, it tells you to stay in the trade. You can see the price action here in the pre-market. It tells you to stay in the trade. And until this turns back, you can stay in the trade. So to get into the trade, you want to use the ticks information. The, you know, that's, the custom RSI is not a primary trigger indicator. It's a, it's a supporting indicator. Both of these are proprietary. And in the, in the tick SPX, you can see now, the value is going down. You can see the red number in value there. It's negative 184. And also what you'll see is uh, the, the stocks that are bullish or bearish coming in. You can see the very bearish is now coming in quite a bit, a little bit of bearish action there. Uh, and so based on this information, if you wanted to trade the stock itself or the options on the stock, uh, you can trade that as well. So I used to run this as a live webinar, uh, you know, where uh, I was uh, I was live for about an hour every day. But uh, because of my situation, I won't be able to do that. So and, uh, and, and, and for the same reason and for the reason that in the SPX takes trade opportunities ca can come anytime during the day. So anything meaningful would have to be an all day service, which is just not practical. And plus, I don't have the commitment. So uh, all, all in all, uh, you know, at the end of the day, I feel, you know, it's still better to, uh, you know, get the algo and install it on your computer. But then very many users uh, have all those challenges that I discussed earlier. And so for them, this would be the right, uh, you know, choice. And so, you know, this is now you can see the ticks are going down. The custom RSI is starting to go into neutral. Uh, but once again, there is no trade. You don't want to trade here for the first uh, one to two hours because I mean not one to two hours uh, for the first half an hour to uh, to 45 minutes because you you need to let the tick data develop. As of now, it's developing negative. Uh, it's negative 150, and uh, so but it, you know it'll change. It can change any time. You know it can go up, and uh, if it goes up from a very low level. Uh, like you can see now the tick imp is improving a little bit on this bar. Uh, it's gone to negative 140. However, that doesn't mean you can take a bullish trade. You first of all, you want to wait for the half an hour, 45 minutes to come in. And then, uh, you know, you, uh, you would want to do that. Okay, so as we let this develop, let's uh, looking at a few questions here. Okay. All right. Uh, JS. Uh, okay. So I'll, I'll have to get, you'll have to, you'll have to send me an email, J, uh, JS. Uh, Ola, will it be a naked option? I, I don't know what you mean by I already answered that. Uh, it's a naked option, meaning like it, it's going to be a long call or a long put. And what we are going to do is go into, if you look at the SPX options, um, what we are going to do is, uh, you know, like for today, it's Friday. So, you know, do you want to go into today's expiry? You can, you know, if it's the morning session, you can. See, because we are not planning to hold on to these trades overnight, no chance. Uh, there is no adjustment either. You're going to depend on the, on the, on the, uh, on the signal and in a matter of 15, 20 minutes or 30 minutes, you're going to be out of the trade, okay? You're going to be out of the trade. So that's, you know, that's the whole goal of this. So let me come back to market watch because sometimes it takes, uh, you know, I, this, this takes a little time to load over here. But uh, this one here uh, in the, you know, in the live webinar, uh, you know, I'll be putting it on a real account. So, you know, you won't have this issue. Uh, this is a simulated account. So sometimes it, it has some data issues there. But regardless, you can see now uh, the ticks uh, are, are starting to develop. Uh, it's uh, the, the market is wants to move higher. You can see the futures are also improving. However, there is still no trade yet because there's just not enough information at all. Uh, we are barely in on the on, on five minutes into trading. Okay. 
So naked longs only, exactly, naked longs only. So it'll either be a long call uh, or it'll be a uh, long put, okay? Uh, if the market goes sideways, just get out of the trade. That's it. Uh, sideways or, or against you, just uh, close the position. No adjustments, no taking overnight, nothing. Uh, which expiry? About 30 to 35 delta, I would say. So you know, if you uh, if you come to the if you come to the options uh, screen, uh, you can go to for a 30 to 35 uh, delta. That would be the best. And when when it comes to 50 delta, remember any option that comes to 50 delta will have the maximum relative value because the relative value is what uh, uh, is the percentage of the uh, or the ratio of the extrinsic value to the intrinsic value and that is maximized uh, when the option is uh, at the money exactly like around 50 delta. So that is a good time to get out of the trade but you, you need not get out of the trade if the signal is still telling you that uh, you should stay in the trade. So right now here there is a little bit of a divergence. The price seems to be going up, but the ticks are actually weakening. So at some point, the price will come down because the market internals are, uh, you know, they, uh, they rule the roost. I mean, this is coming from all 500 S&P stocks. So it's a very raw, it's a very fundamental piece of data. And so most of the time you will see that, uh, you know, uh, that uh, the price action will follow the ticks. Uh, because the ticks is the real uh, fundamental piece of data. Now it may happen on a, on a strange day like I, I believe it was last, uh, uh, I think it was last Monday maybe when some, or no not Monday when we had that big rally, uh, when um, some stocks, the big stocks, the Apples and the Googles, sometime they do very well but the rest of the market is not. So out of 400 and uh, I mean out of 500 stocks, if about 450 of them are not doing well, then you might see a divergence and once you see a divergence you have to recognize that it is a divergence day and uh, just take you know small trades uh, uh, you know whatever that may, uh, might be if you were trading five contracts then you just go two contracts uh, just and, and keep it on a tight leash so right now as you can see the day trading column you can see the very bullish coming in that's because of this price action so the day trading column, this is a real time column that you'll see and if you wanted to trade the options on the screen, I mean on these stocks, you could do that or you can even, uh, uh, you know, or you can uh, even, uh, 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 what do you call, uh, trade, the, uh, trade the stock itself or the options also, okay. So now this is a nice powerful move coming in and so you would, you would, uh, you know, you would expect to see the tick uh, number starting to improve because, uh, you know, uh, uh, this is a strong push higher. And this day trades column also tells you about the breadth. Okay, so you can see 70% of the stocks are bullish. However, the day trading column only looks at uh, you know the immediate past. Okay, it, it doesn't know that two hours ago uh, the futures were 22 points down. No, no, no. It doesn't know that. It's only looking at what is available uh, in the past 10 to 15 uh, you know minutes or maybe 20 minutes or 30 minutes at most. So uh, that's what you're looking at. Now you can see the ticks are moving higher. So now the one minute chart can also, I mean, uh, the one minute chart can be noisy also. So at some point uh, in, uh, you know, after 10 or 15 or 20 minutes, you would want to move to the five minute chart and you should take your trading decisions based on the five minute chart, okay? So that, uh, you know, that is what I would recommend. All right, question, is your market watch list available to install? Uh, it's available as an algo. So, so once again, see, you, uh, I, I was mentioning earlier, the, you know, these are all algos. And I would, you know, my, uh, my recommendation is that you would, uh, you know, that you buy the algo itself and, uh, you know, it's a one-time cost and you install it on your computer. Uh, you know, obviously there's a little bit of a capital, you know, you know, expense there. Whereas with this webinar, you know, you're paying $149 a month, but uh, you know, you, you're going to be, uh, you know, keep on paying that. But many customers cannot install Thinkorswim. They cannot open an account with TD Ameritrade. Uh, and many customers don't uh, use Thinkorswim. So, uh, in a, so mostly this is for uh, those kinds of issues. And, and if someone doesn't want to put a capital outlay uh, like that, uh, you know, uh, uh, that's fine. So, you know, this would, uh, because I got so many emails when I was launching the, uh, you know, algos that, uh, you know, many people, there's so many people from outside the US, they cannot uh, open an account with TD Ameritrade. So that's really the problem here. So the ticks are still negative. Uh, 20 okay so, so this, uh, I mean the it's still negative okay so 
uh, you know, you would want to be careful, even though it says bullish, bullish, you would want to be careful because uh, we are, after all, we are still down about seven, eight points on the, uh, uh, you know, on the S&P. Okay. So let's watch this and then we'll see at some point we'll move to the five minute chart. Gene, I have the algo, but didn't see the option to install. No, the market watch is a separate algo, Gene. Here, let me show you here. So if you come to, uh, if you come, if you come to the website, over here, the, the proprietary day trading signals is a separate algo. Now, if you've already if you already have the algo for the SPX, uh, uh, certainly I can give you I can give you a, you know a decent price. But this algo is 997 by itself. Okay, so this will give you the uh, you know all of the all of the uh, uh, the very bullish and the very bearish and all of that. Okay, so algorithm based. So this is uh, you know there's some videos here. There are playlists for all of these things. So. Even on the SPX, you can see there's a playlist here and I upload a video just of my analysis every day or two. And so you can uh, take a look at that as well. OK, so let's go back to the market here uh, and uh, we will uh, you know, look at it. So as you can see, the negative ticks are starting to come in now, so, uh, you know, slowly. So. OK. Let's let's watch this. All right, uh, David, uh, will you be offering a uh, price? David, if you don't mind, please put mark your questions as, uh, you know, either to all or everything so everybody can see it. Uh, will you be offering a price if you want to do both swing trading and trading? Yeah, so definitely. So if you have the swing trading, if you're already in the swing trading program and you wanted to get into this, you'll get a discount. Just email me. Uh, any questions, just email me at info at uh, optiontiger.com. So now you should see the very bullish coming down in terms of uh, you know all of this and you should see the very bearish moving up and and that's also giving you a sense of the breadth of the market uh, okay this is not the full spx this is just the main stocks all the big stocks that i've listed here but they're a fairly decent representation of the overall market now the ticks are going down even further as you can see um, and so now it's negative 457 okay now it's negative 457 so and you can see the price action also uh, going down so now if uh, you know it's too early to take a trade i'll tell you that it's only 12 minutes into the trading session however just looking at this price action if you wanted to do a little scalping trade there's nothing wrong with that you can do it because you can see the trend going down you know and this is entering the bearish now you can see this red line the custom rsi is entering the bearish custom rsi is just a price indicator it's it's got nothing to do with the uh, with the ticks and uh, you know, uh, so you just watch the custom RSI, and and the real usefulness of the custom RSI is once you're in a trade, you it helps you stay in the trade. Okay, the moment it starts turning around and crossing, you know, uh, crossing down uh, from the uh, uh, the 60 line, that's the time you get out. Or if it's crossing up from the bearish zone, that's the time you get out. Okay. Do you put uh, always put a limit for entry? Yes, uh, that is a good practice. You should always place limit orders. Yeah. All right. So here we go. Let's see what's going on with the ticks. You can see the very bullish has come down just a little bit, and uh, we are about 60, 40 on the uh, on the bullish bearish scale over here. Okay. So let's watch this. See, if you move too soon to the five minute chart, it won't make a lot of sense. So here you go, if you see this, and uh, so this is the five minute chart. So on the five minute chart, it's telling you the trend is lower, the trend is lower. However, the feedback loop on the data is not, uh, you know, is not quick enough. So you have to wait for five minutes for the next, uh, you know, data point to come in. So that's why I say when the market uh, starts, you keep it on a one minute, and that gives you a, a nice feedback loop. And then uh, once it goes into, uh, say, about a half an hour or 40 minutes, you can move into a five minute. But always take your trading decisions based on the five minute because the one minute can be very noisy. It can be up and down and, uh, you know, things like that. And you may not be able to spot a trend uh, clearly with the one minute. Whereas the five minutes is a, is a much, uh, much more robust set of uh, data going in there. So let's just watch this. And if you have further questions, uh, you, uh, please feel free to, uh, you know, uh, uh, to chime in there. But there is plenty of videos available on the on the, on, on the playlist. So you can go ahead and, uh, you know, uh, uh, check those out. And as I said, inside the course, there's a lot of videos. And so you want to, uh, you know, sort of go through that. This program is going to start on Monday, this coming Monday. 
And so at 9.15, you'll see the webinar screens on. And uh, so if you, if you sign up uh, uh, just over the weekend, I think you should have enough time to go through all the, all the material because uh, yeah, that's important. And I've given guidelines based on how I've been using this system for the past few months. So, uh, you, know, this will be, uh, you know, this will be helpful. And I continue to refine it. Okay, refine me not the algo itself, but continue to refine the interpretation of uh, these uh, these indicators. So, like I said, uh, you know, uh, just a couple of days ago, we had a divergence day. The market was up nicely, but the ticks never really moved up there. And then, if you looked at it, all the big stocks, Google had moved uh, quite a bit, and Amazon had moved quite a bit, and Apple had moved quite a bit. Also, you know, in in the S and P 500 index. These big tech stocks or the big uh, biotech stocks, they have a lot of weightage. I mean, Apple alone is supposed to have a weightage of about 7 to 8% of the index. And so uh, you will see situations where uh, some part of the market is moving higher and the price is moving higher, but the ticks are not showing it because the rest of the index is not, uh, you know, is not, uh, is, is not uh, 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 doing the same thing. Also, this is the S&P index. Now let me show you the study itself. You can come to the study. This is the study. So once you, uh, you know, once you go here, uh, well, this is only if you have the algo, you can do it. You can, you can uh, come here, and instead of the tick SP, you can do just the tick, which is the New York Stock Exchange. You can do the tick Q, which is the Nasdaq, and then the tick RL is uh, is, is the Russell, and then the tick SP, of course, is the uh, the S and P. So, but that's available if you only get the algo. So, uh, you know, in general, I prefer the tick SP because it has the broadest market information, and of course, the SPX options are the best uh, options among all the indices uh, that they would, you know, they would be the best options to trade. Okay, so here we go, negative three sixty nine on the one minute chart. So, it's been a little bit of a price degradation here, but. Once again, you know, you don't want to take a trade in the first half an hour unless there is some serious momentum coming in from the pre-markets. Either it's bad news or good news, whatever it is, unless there is some very, very serious momentum coming in and you want to just take advantage of a momentum trade, then that, you know, uh, uh, that's, you know, that's fine. But otherwise, uh, you would want to wait for at least about uh, half an hour for, for the data points to come in. And that's when also the market as a whole also adjusts. Because when before 9.30 a.m. Eastern time, there is either a lot of pent up demand or supply and they're just waiting for the markets to open so that they can, you know, run with it. So, you know, that, that demand or supply has to stabilize itself. <coughs> Excuse me. So while we are waiting for this, I, uh, let me just come back to the SPX here. Uh, I want to come to the products and I'll show you. So if you've never seen the, you know, this before, you can buy the algo itself. If you buy the algo and the custom RSI, it's 1297. But as I said, many people don't have Think or Swim or they cannot open Think or Swim, all of that. So to, uh, to also help uh, those traders, you can have this webinar screen. But, uh, you know, I want to be clear. Uh, when I have time, like today, you know, when I have time, I will... Uh, you know, I, I'll come there and chime in, but you know, you know, don't depend on me being there because uh, that is that is not part of the service. So I just want to be clear with that. All right, Venkate, repeat on the other index like NDX. Yeah. So if you if you go to the platform and if you uh, go to the studies, uh, if you go to the studies here, you can edit studies, and so you see the tick SP, the, and, and so that's a that's a configurable thing. So instead of the tick SP. You can do the tick Q. I think you are interested in the Nasdaq. Uh, you can do the tick Q. So the tick Q is a different tick. Okay, it's not the S&P tick. So if I do this and I do apply uh, and okay, you will see the Nasdaq tick. This is the Nasdaq tick. Okay, and you can see it's very steadily down. But then to correlate to that, you actually have to go to the Nasdaq, uh, you know, chart itself, uh, the NDX chart itself. And as you can see, some pent up demand, you know, the first few minutes. But now the NASDAQ is, you know, clearly the NDX is, is clearly uh, going down. So that's how you would look at it. And which is why I say first half an hour, don't do anything because the pent up demand supply issue always uh, skews uh, the data that comes in when the markets just open. Okay. So uh, you want to, and if you want the, 
NASDAQ uh, futures, you would do NQ. So this is the NASDAQ futures. And uh, we'll let the, the tick data come in. And so once again, you can see there's a rush in here because during the, you know, from coming in from the pre-market, there was a bullish tone. And when I say bullish tone, it's all very relative. I mean, this is a day trading environment. So, uh, you know, and, and that lasted for a few minutes, perhaps 10 minutes. But after that, you can see that, uh, uh, but the ticks never really correlated to that. You can see that, right? You can see that very clearly in the NASDAQ, the ticks did not correlate to that. And so ultimately the ticks will win. Okay, 80, 90% of the time it will win. Sometimes you will see a divergence day, but ultimately the ticks will win because this is a measure of every stock in the index. And so, uh, you know, this will win. And so now you can see it's a clearly a downtrend here on the NASDAQ. All right, so let me go back to the uh, S&P. So if you buy the algo, you can, you can uh, customize it for any of the indices. But on the webinar, I'm going to show only the tick SP because that is the broadest uh, index there. So I'm going to do the tick SP again over there, apply. And over here, I'm going to go back to the slash ES. Okay. So now we are in about 20 minutes. It's still not uh, enough, but you can see uh, somewhat of a trend developing to the bearish side. And uh, so uh, this is, uh, you know, this is nice and persistent. So let's see how it looks if we move to a five minute chart at this point. Uh, it's, it's clearly bearish and it's entering the bearish zone. Not too bad, but it's still too early. You can see on the five minute chart, we had two bars up, two bars down. And now this bar is working itself. Uh, you know, so uh, it, it, it's still clearly bearish. Uh, it's still clearly bearish. But is it time to take a trade? I don't think so. I don't think so. You want to wait for at least, uh, you know, uh, uh, you want to wait for at least a half an hour to 45 minutes. All right. Can we check this on SPY? Yeah, you see, you can put anything over here. Okay. You can put the SPY, um, you know, you can put the SPY over here. You can put Apple over here and see if you, if, uh, and, and you want to, if you want to see whether Apple is correlating to the ticks, you can do that. Okay. You can do that. You can put any stock here and trade that stock or the, or the option of that stock itself. Okay. Uh, strange noises. Yeah, because somebody is not muted. I'm going to mute them. Okay, good. I think it should be good now. All right. Thank you for letting me know. Please, uh, if, you, if you don't mind, if you can see your mic, uh, if you can mute it, that will be good. All right. So you can put any stock here and see if it's correlating to the S&P on that particular day. There is no guarantee that it might, but you know, it could, it could. And so if you wanted to trade a stock, uh, you want to, you can put the stock here and you can trade the options on the stock. You can trade the stock itself, uh, whatever you want to do. So the top part of the chart has no impact on the tick SPX. Okay. It will have an impact on the custom RSI because the custom RSI is based upon the price action of whatever is on the top chart. However, the tick SPX is an independent indicator. You can keep it here and you can uh, use it for anything. All right. Yeah, people are not muting. And uh, 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 Linda, I believe. Linda, if you don't mind, uh, please mute. Uh, it, it keeps coming on. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go back to the ES over here. And let's look at how this is shaping up. So in my opinion, it is still a little early for the five minute chart, although it's developing nicely. Uh, we are still just into about 25 minutes uh, on the trading day. So I'm going to go back to the one minute chart just to get a quicker feedback loop on this one. Okay. So this was, and then you, you want to generally be uh, be aware of the general technical analysis stuff, right? I mean, so you can see this one, very high volume, very high volume. In fact, it is higher than the open. So this tells you that this is a very, very significant bar. And so it's going some more down. Uh, this one is a, a very low volume tells, uh, you know, okay, selling pressure may be dying out. Uh, and once again, it tries to breach that higher volume, it comes back up. So you know, this is telling me at least on the one minute chart, looks like a support zone is forming over here, you know, in this general area. And I wouldn't be surprised if the market goes up a little bit from here. So you also want to be 
you know, aware of those general technical analysis stuff. All right, let's watch the one minute chart for a while. Okay, how do you change the scale on the uh, questions? Yeah, okay. How do you change the scales? Linda, I'm going to have to uh, make, uh, okay, please, if you don't mind, otherwise I'll have to uh, have you log back in uh, because uh, your mic is on. Okay, yeah, I'm muting everyone, but somehow it's, uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of uh, little quirks with go to meeting also. All right, so a little bit of support zone might be coming in. So I'm just going to take a look at the questions here. How do you change the scale on the custom RSI? You don't. You don't kill the, uh, you, uh, I mean, you don't change the scales. Okay, all right. I had to remove her from the room. So, uh, uh, you know, let's see. Okay, so question is, uh, no, you don't change the, you don't change the scale on the, on the custom RSI. Or you, or you meaning the tick SPX scale meaning, uh, you, uh, you can change the, you can hit this plus button, you can hit the minus button, you can do, come here and change all the time frames here. Uh, you can do all of that. All right. So next question. Uh, do we need to change the custom RSI? No, you don't need to do anything with the custom RSI. The custom RSI will just come as an indicator. You install it just like you would install uh, the TIC SPX. And uh, then, uh, uh, you know, you just, uh, you know, uh, you, you take the trade. So um, now that is, uh, Venkatesh, if you're going to get the algo, okay, if you're going to get the webinar room, then you don't have to do anything because all of this is already done over here. And uh, so you won't need to do anything. So now you can see the very bearish, okay? So we have only two or three in the bullish and we have most of it in the very bearish. Uh, so we are looking at a, even this day trades column tells you uh, an idea of, uh, you know, of the, uh, uh, you know, of the breadth of the market. Which expiry to trade? Uh, and uh, Ola, please uh, make your questions uh, public if you don't mind. Um, the um, which expiry to trade is like today is a Friday morning session. I would say to you know today's expiry is fine. But let's say you go into the afternoon session today, then I would go into the into the next expiry because time decay just becomes rampant at that point, and so you don't want to simply lose an edge on your trade just because of time decay. So, but you know, your the in general, it's no more than one or two days expiry. So, if you were to trade on uh, uh, on uh, Tuesday morning, then you have a Wednesday expiry. You would go for that. All right. Let's see. Still bearish. Uh, ES is down about sixteen points. It's trying to find some kind of a support zone. I can I can feel that because every time it goes down, some higher volume comes in. And tries to support it. So the, you know, this was very high. This was quite high. The next uh, you know high was this one. So let's see. I think uh, it may be forming a support zone here, and we are approaching the half an hour mark. So at this point, I think we can move to a five-minute chart and just stay on the five-minute chart. Sometimes, if there's a lot of volatility going up and down and up and down, then you might have to stay with the one-minute chart longer. Uh, but uh, I would say otherwise half an hour is a good time uh, the, uh, 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 to keep it on. Uh, you, no, you don't do the SPX because the SPX is not a traded instrument. Only the options on the SPX are traded. So if you do SPX right here, you won't see any volume. There is no volume uh, you know, information on the SPX. There's no volume. So you don't want to do the SPX. You want to do the ES, which is a 100% correlated product. So. You can do the SPY, you can do the SPY door also. Uh, that is also a 100% correlated product. You will see a difference in the numbers. If this is 2923, SPX might be 2925 or 2922, depending on the cost of carry, the difference between the futures and the spot price. But that number is uniform. So, uh, you know, it doesn't make any difference. So if you look at the five minute chart, now you can put a little better perspective. Yes, the market tried to go up the first bar, just coming off this momentum from the pre-market. But see this bar, pretty high volume, almost equal to the open, but it gets pushed down all the way to the middle. So it's telling you the selling is coming in right there and then selling, selling. And this bar tells you once again, high volume. But on the five minute chart, you can see that the volume is not higher than the open. OK, on the one minute bar, you saw you saw a one minute bar, which was higher than the open. So. The five minute bar gives you a different perspective. The numbers will be different. So it all depends how the internals are handling all these things. However, what, what, what you want to make, you want to get a better perspective from the five minute chart. So now 
the RSI is telling you that you're in the bearish zone. However, temporarily, the ticks are, you know, at least there's a green dot here. So you would want to see that change. And if that changes, and this bar itself can do, a, can be recalculated once, uh, you know, this five minute bar is over, it, you know, it, it, it could be recalculated. And so this negative 229 could change. And so then, you know, you might be setting up for a nice bearish trade over here. Let's see, we are only about in 7.32, so we still have three minutes to go in this bar, but it is certainly setting up for a nice put trade at this point. The data is coming in, it's telling you the, uh, the internals of the market are weak, and now you can also see this day trades column, you can see that there is more very bearish than the bullish. And so uh, you, you definitely uh, are getting ready for a put trade at this point, unless these, you know, this starts to go up and uh, it changes. Then, you know, uh, you, you just have to wait for the next opportunity. But just because this starts going up, uh, you know, you don't take a call trade, okay? That, you know, that would not be a, 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 what to say, a high probability setup because you're coming off some, uh, from some weak levels, custom RSI is already in the bearish zone until custom RSI at the very least has to go into the, into the very bullish zone before you can think of a call trade and plus you have to see significant improvement in the ticks before you can think of a call trade. So at this point, you're only looking for a put trade. You're just waiting for the ticks uh, also to line up with the custom RSI so that you can, uh, you, can, uh, you can go into that trade. Now, but bear in mind, once you get into a trade, I mean, anything can happen, right? I mean, you know, the, the market's that way. There is no guarantee what will happen one second later. So that's why I say, if the signal goes again, I mean, if the, if the price action goes against you, just take a stop, you know, small stop loss and get out. And uh, that's fine. Just wait for the next opportunity because when you catch the trend nicely at one point, you're going to make up for, you know, four or five of these, uh, you know, uh, 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 these bad trades because you're, you know, you're going to go, uh, you're going to go into about seven, eight points on the S&P and uh, that will make up for any of these bad trades. All right, let's wait for this bar. It's seven, uh, okay, 7.34. So we have about a minute. So let's just watch this. And you can see the price action is improving. Price action is improving. The volume is not much on this bar, even though there's a, it's a nice uh, big bar, the volume is not much. But uh, price action definitely, okay, now it's coming in. The volume just uh, got a big boost there. So here you can see that support zone. We saw it on the one minute chart over several bars. Here you can see it makes, uh, it makes, it gives you, it gives you better perspective. Even this bar tried to go down, but came back all the way to the middle. So definitely some kind of support zone forming at this level at uh, the negative 15 on the ES, some kind of support zone is forming. And if that is the case, and if the market starts to go up, then unfortunately there will be no trade at this point because uh, now, yeah, now you can see, here you go. The ticks are negative 109. So that's a significant improvement uh, in the ticks. So do you still go for a, for a bullish trade? No, not yet, because you need to see at the very least price action get into the bullish zone and at least one or two bars coming closer to the zero or even crossing the zero. That's when uh, you, will, uh, you will find that. But if you want to take small scalping trades, you can, you know, just a you know, quick, quick trade. Now you can see the very bullish coming in here on the day trade column also. So the day trade column is very reactive. Okay, it looks at the just, you know, the previous, uh, uh, you know, five minutes, uh, you know, it's based on, it's based on a five minute chart. So here you can see from here this way, you know, the last four or five, you know, four bars, uh, actually quite bullish because, you know, it, it's recovering and then this bar was obviously very bullish. So uh, now definitely some kind of recovery going on over here. Okay, so if you uh, wanted to take a quick trade to the call side, you can keep it small uh, and but be aware that that is not the ideal setup. And so it can go against you. Okay, so that's the that's as far as the ticks, folks. Um, yeah, the there is a lot of information on the YouTube playlist. As I said, you can go through all of this. Uh, it's called the SPX Day Trading with Proprietary Indicators. If you can go to my YouTube channel, uh, and uh, you you know you can find it there. So otherwise, uh, over here, if you wanted to uh, you know sign up, uh, this would be the Bitly link. Uh, the best way to uh, uh, look at it and of course you'll get the rec you'll get the recording of this webinar also but the bitly link is this bitly slash uh, if you want to just note it down you can note it down uh, all in caps spx hyphen webinar hyphen screen and if you have any questions you can email me at info at optiontiger.com 
this webinar service starts on Monday morning uh, at 9.15 a.m. Eastern Time. But there is material that you need to go through. So uh, if you have, if you if you're intending to join, I think you should join uh, join it earlier so that you have enough time to go through all that materials there. And uh, we'll uh, we'll see you. And if you have any questions, uh, well, uh, please email me at info at optiontiger.com. So it looks like uh, you know at, at least as far as a trading opportunity, we might not uh, have one in the first one hour. It might go in uh, a little later unless things change again and goes down. So this is what I mean by things can change anytime because you know if you had taken a call trade here, uh, it, it would have lasted maybe a minute or so, that's it. Because uh, you know the trend is down, the trend is down. So you, in general, you don't want to go against the trend, you want to wait for uh, you know, the right setup and then uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, look at this, okay? So now you can see this thing is going deep now. So you would uh, expect, let's wait for this bar to get over at 7.40. Um, you know, this would be a big, big, uh, it should come down quite a bit on the tick value. The RSI is already in bearish. And so the, after this bar, if you wanted to get into a put trade, yes, definitely, I think it would make sense. Now you can see this is a huge bar. This is a huge bar, higher volume, lot of selling coming in here, lot of selling here. But, and this is where if you wanted to get a, you know, quicker feedback loop, you would jump down to the one minute and see what's going on with the one minute because uh, obviously you don't want to wait for five minutes to uh, you know for the for the feedback loop and so you want to wait for you know you want to jump down to the one minute so on the, on the one minute we already have two red bars but you know this is a one minute chart so you you need a little bit more information and on this one minute you can see it you know it got beat down but it came all the way here on the one minute so that's uh, you know that's in, you know that's information that's uh, important because uh, this tells me that there was, uh, you know, there was some support here of, of some sort because it came back all the way to the top half of the bar. So let's jump back to the five minute and see how that looks because we are coming to the end of uh, the five minute bar. But, but on the five minute bar, it's still in the, in the bottom half. So you're still looking at a nice, uh, uh, you know, put trade here. This, uh, you can see this one has changed. You, if, you, if you recall, this was negative 109 with a green dot. And we thought that the ticks were improving, but as, as I told you that that because it's the current bar, that bar is still being calculated. And so now you can see it's negative 251. So once this bar gets over in about five seconds, if we have a worse tick, then uh, you can, uh, you can, uh, you know, what do you call? Uh, let's see what, yeah, negative 452. Okay. That's negative 452. So this is setting up for a put trade right now. Uh, this is setting up for a put trade right now. So I know it's moving higher. So you just want to wait a little, uh, but uh, this is setting up for a nice put trade. Let's just jump back to the one minute to get a better uh, feel and see. Uh, can you save two different setups, one for one minute and the other for five minutes? I can do that. I can split this part of the frame into into two. However, uh, you, know, uh, you know, that will uh, uh, clamp up the screen a little bit. But uh, I can I can do that I can do that. It's a good it's a good question actually. It'll be very helpful if you you know if you can do that. Okay, so you, you know right now you have the two ticks you have the custom RSI in bearish. So you just want to wait for the right point here. If you see this price action going down on this bar, yeah, and and so by this time on your analyze screen or whatever your trading screen is, you would be getting ready for a trade. And you can see it's uh, you know it, it, uh, it, it's it's somewhat. Uh, uh, it's somewhat being beaten down. It's not quite there yet. So let's see if the one minute chart gives you a better perspective. So as I said, this was definitely, a, you know, I mean, th yeah, that looked like a support zone. So in my opinion, this is still going, uh, going to recover a little bit here. There was a little bit of a trade here, as you can see, uh, you know, earlier, but it's too soon to the open. So I wouldn't. Uh, so with this whole SPX uh, thing, you don't want to rush into a trade and remember you're going to get one or two great opportunities every day and you just have to take advantage of that so you know uh, uh, you just have to uh, wait for those opportunities and they will come and uh, most of the time in the morning session there is one in the afternoon session there is one but there's no saying you know it can happen in the middle of the day also but overall in general you will you know you will find one in the morning one in the afternoon Right now it's looking a little tired here. You can see this uh, this green bar with very low volume. In fact, the lowest, uh, uh, you know, so that uh, 
tells me that there is no real demand to go up. So this is 743.30, so one and a half minutes left. So I'm going to go back to the five minute chart because all trading decisions you should take on the five minute chart, not on the one minute chart. So now you have, uh, you know, the, the tick has improved from negative 400 something to negative 300. So let's watch this. You can see on the day trades column, it's sort of even, uh, slightly more to the bearish side still. So uh, it's telling you the markets, uh, generally the, uh, the breadth is still a little, uh, little weak there. Now the new bar is going to come in, negative 278. So slight improvement in the ticks. So negative 259. So once again, uh, it's going against the, and you can see custom RSI trying to come out of the bearish zone. So, uh, you know, the put trade, while this looks like a great move down, uh, you know, unless uh, you were just taking it as a scalping trade or anything, uh, you know, uh, you, you could have made money. It went down quite a bit from 29.26 to 29.16. That was a 10 point drop in that one bar itself. But, you know, it all depends. Do you want to be a scalper like that? Or do you want to wait for the right opportunity and try to, uh, make about a thousand dollars on a five contract position uh, that's up to each individual but uh, you can also do these scalps here here right here you can see on the five minute chart you know you you're seeing uh, four or five bars here and you know don't get shaken out by one bar one green dot in the middle of red but two green dots yeah you have to take notice Okay, so this bar is developing to the downside, but once again, no trade until uh, you know the setup is right. So let me come back uh, to the presentation here because I want to wrap this up. Uh, basically, as I said, the best would be if you can install it on your own machine. That way you can move from the one minute, five minute, do whatever you want. You have all the flexibility. You have uh, also uh, the, uh, you know, the flexibility for uh, you know, for moving to the NASDAQ tick or the Russell tick or the Dow Jones tick, whatever you want. Uh, but for those of you who cannot do this, you know, cannot have that flexibility, whether it's due to Thinkorswim, I mean, Thinkorswim is, uh, is not uh, available on, in most countries on, you know, on the planet. So, uh, you know, there's a significant population that, uh, uh, that, is, uh, that is affected by that. So if that's the case, then this is your next best bet. Uh, if you if you wanted to buy these algos, it's uh, it's right here. As I said, uh, you can come to the SPX, uh, you know, intraday trading. You get both for 12.97 over here. But otherwise, the monthly plan would be for 149 dollars a month, and that would be the uh, Bitly slash SPX hyphen webinar screen. And if you wanted to get in, I would recommend you get in uh, uh, sometime this weekend earlier so that you have enough time to uh, you know go uh, you know go through all that stuff. All right, folks, so thanks for coming. And if you have any questions, please email me at info at optiontiger.com. But uh, this, uh, you know, I just wanted to uh, uh, give some details about this service for those of you who cannot use Thinkorswim. Okay, thanks, thanks for coming. Have a great day, rather. Thank you.